Photomat was an American retail chain of photo development drive through kiosks from 1967 until their online operations ceased in 2009. Welcome to Eric C Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos that are posted during the week. Please leave a suggestion or a comment and maybe you might see that video in a future posting. Thank you to Lisa Lee who's made a suggestion for a video and this is her suggestion. Thank you for watching and now back to the program. No matter how you get to Photomat, get to Photomat. Because right now we're having a free film special. Just bring in any roll of color print film for developing and get a replacement roll of Photomat film free. But better hurry. Word travels fast. The concept of a kiosk where people could easily drop off and pick up film that would be ready overnight originated in Florida, where Charles Brown opened the first location in 1965. After buying Brown stock shares and arranging for a royalty, Preston Fleet and his partner Clifford Graham founded the Photomat Corporation in 1967. The concept grew quickly, boasting 1,800 sites in its first 18 months of operation. Owing to its color scheme, people often thought Kodak operated the business, which led to complaints from Kodak as well as lawsuits. Photomat changed design in 1970 to avoid confusion. While it was relatively easy to spot a Photomat hut in a parking lot, a business operating as an island, surrounded by traffic, had its problems. Who can forget this iconic scene at the Twin Pines Mall a lot in 1985's Back to the Future? Some people recall plowing into the kiosk or backing into it. There was also a matter of the bathrooms. There weren't any. Employees often made arrangements to duck into local supermarkets or other stores when nature demanded it. Men were dubbed photo max, women were dubbed photo mates, and management required them to wear short shorts or hot pants in a nod to the strategy used for flight attendants at Pacific Southwest Airlines. PSA for short. You can also reference that in my other video that I made. Thank you. So how did this concept work? Did they develop on site? With one employee in a small hut, how did pictures get developed? Magic? Well, cars pulled up to the photomat location and dropped off film they wanted processed. After being shuttled via courier to a local photo lab, it would be ready for the pickup the following day. Photomat performed so well that Fleet and Graham decided to take it public in 1969, with each man holding stock worth $60 million at one point. In 1971, Graham was ousted from Photomat over allegations he was misusing funds for his own personal gain, including his political interests. Graham was also a supporter of both Nixon and football player turned congressman Jack Kemp who became an assistant to the president in the Photomat Corporation and referred football pros to become franchisees. At its peak around 1980, there were over 4,000 Photomats throughout the United States, primarily in suburban areas. Photomats were distinctive for their pyramid-shaped gold-colored roofs and signs with blue and red lettering, usually positioned in a large parking lot such as a supermarket or strip mall. The Photomat huts required a minimal amount of land and were able to accommodate cars driving up to drop off or pick up film. By the early 1980s, Preston Fleet had left the company and sold off his shares. With over 4,000 locations, Photomat had far overextended itself, sometimes opening kiosks so close to one another it cannibalized sales. Kind of sounds like Starbucks, doesn't it? There was also a growing number of pharmacies and grocery stores offering photo development services, especially the one-hour photo. The real death blow for Photomat, however, wasn't over expansion. It was the emergence of the one hour fo photo lab. For an investment of $50,000 to $100,000, existing stores could install labs that could process photos in as little as one hour while customers shopped. 
mini labs exploded from just 600 locations in 1980 to 14,700 by 1988. And since film never left the sites, it was less likely to get lost. It decimated Photomat and its copycat businesses, with Photomat moving from an impressive 18% market share in the photo processing industry to just 2% by 1988. The company tried to recalibrate, converting home movies to videotape and even offering VHS rentals during the VCR boom of the 1980s. But it wasn't successful. Mass layoffs and closures followed. Mini labs would have their own reckoning, both due to the rise of the 35mm photography and digital photography. In 1990, Photomat was down to just 800 locations. Photomat Corporation was acquired by Konica Photo Imaging in 1986. After the introduction of the digital cameras, overnight service eventually became obsolete and Photomat switched to online digital imaging at photomat.com where users could edit and store their images. In 2002, Konica sold the company to Viewpoint Corporation, now called Meta Creations. The photo developing website ceased operations on September 1st, 2009. So what happened to those iconic photo mat locations? Well, following the company's collapse, many were repurposed into other businesses. Some became coffee shops, others morphed into watch repair kiosks, locksmith huts, windshield wiper dealers, tailors, even cell phone repair stores. So if you're ever driving around, look for these iconic little huts. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.